Hey, welcome to Flutter Canvas Tutorials. So this is a new series where I create a simple interaction or an effect with Flutter Canvas. If you'd like to see something specific done, please leave a comment and then I will try to make those ones requested. In this video, I'm creating an animated weather widget from scratch. Something like what you see here. Here are a few things you can learn from this video, such as how to place the text on screen and measure the size of the drone text how to compose multiple custom paint widgets, and also how to do a simple animation like rain. As usual, we start with the very minimal, just the My App widget showing nothing on the screen. I will be using a custom font in this, so I've downloaded and also set the font in the PubSpec file. So let's start by creating a stateful widget called Weather Widget. All the drawing will happen on a canvas. In order to host the canvas, we create a custom painter class called My Canvas. Just to see something, let's paint the canvas in red. And let me quickly sort out the missing imports and the breakage. As usual, I will draw a frame in the middle. Uh, next, we're going to draw some text on the screen. First is to draw the weather location. I will draw it centered at the bottom of the frame.
Here I create a function to draw text horizontally. This will take the position where the text will be centered on and few more parameters for styling and such. If you haven't seen the last week's video where I introduced text drawing, you should see it. Basically, the text drawing is done using the text painter object. It requires another object called text span. Text span accepts the string and the style to be applied. Text alignment and direction is specified in the text paint object. Once created, we need to call layout function so that it computes the area where the text will be drawn. We can specify a width to this layout function to restrict the horizontal spanning. And then we finally call the paint on text painter, specifying a position to start drawing from. So once the layout function is called on the text paint object, we can get the width and the height of the area the text will take. So here, in order to center on a position, we simply get the width of the text and adjust the X position by half the width. Now we are going to draw some vertical text, this time to show the weather condition. We will draw the weather condition at the right border. So we will create a vertical text drawing function. This function will draw text centered vertically on a given point. This is very similar to the horizontal text draw function we created earlier.
the differences in the draw position we compute. This time around, it should be adjusted vertically by half the text paint height. In order to get the text positioned inside horizontally, we need to adjust the horizontal position specified by a small offset. The way we get to draw the text vertically is by using the text wrap property inherent to the text painter. When we specify a max width to the layout function call, it restricts the width of the area text is drawn and it grows vertically. You can see this effect here when I set various widths. Next is to draw the temperature. As before, we will specify a text style for the temperature. These styles should really be outside the paint function and they should be final. I haven't done the refactoring here to clean that up. So for this style, I will use a custom font. This can be downloaded from Google Fonts. The name of the font I selected is Oswald. Once it is downloaded, copy them over to the uh, Assets Fonts folder and then add them to the PubSpec file to include the font in the Flutter project. Once that is done, let's draw the numbers on the top left corner of the frame. This requires another text drawing function. We probably can use a single function and pass parameters, but that's a refactor I will leave to you. The difference is in the draw position call. Sorting out the offsets, I think this is looking very well.
The difference here is that we need to draw the units after the number in a different style. So to make it flush next to the numbers, let's return the width from the text draw function. We will use the degree symbol and C for Celsius units. Pay attention to how I set the position here. I add the width of the previous step to draw the units flush to the digits. Uh, the units should have a different text style so that it looks just right. After adjusting the offsets, uh, it looks good. Next, we're going to draw the rain and clouds. I'm going to draw this in a separate widget. If you look at the container child widget here, we can replace that with a text widget to see how it places itself. So it needs to be wrapped inside a center widget. Um, we will create a new widget called rain widget now. Creating this widget is as before. We quickly create a stateful widget and then attach a custom painter canvas to it. Uh, what is beautiful is that we can use Flutter's widget composition here so that we can set various different animated widgets depending on the weather condition. For example, sunny widget, snowy widget, etc. It is more cleaner than drawing everything on the same canvas. So here when we place the widget in the custom painter object, it sits on top of the canvas. In order for us to see what's going on on the canvas, we shall scale the rain widget by some factor. We can use transform scale to do that. Now in the rain widget, we will create a custom painter canvas just like before, but this time we will call it my rain canvas.
small refactor here to rename the file so that it has some pattern. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and draw the clouds in my rain canvas. Uh, we can easily draw clouds with a bunch of circles. It is a matter of how you place them, so I will speed through this because it is very repetitive. Uh, this copy pasta probably could be refactored into a loop. Okay, I think that's good enough. Alternative would be to use uh, an SVG of a cloud and paint it here. Or you could use path to draw more beautiful clouds. Uh, but that's the detail I would leave to you. Next is to draw rain. This is going back to our normal animation tricks with particles. I will create a bunch of particles. We do that in the rain widget, which is a stateful widget. Quickly create a list and then initialize it on the init state function. We will randomly initialize the positions of each rain streak, give it a random length, random speed, and so on. The original position is used to reset the particles that left the boundaries.
and then we will pass the list of particles to the canvas. Let's move the particle class to its own file, so that the imports. So in this draw rain function, we will iterate through the particles and draw a short line. It looks something like this, but we need to adjust a few parameters to make it look a bit better. Now we're going to animate this. Um, so for that, we need a simple timer. Uh, we will do the initialization in the init state function. Periodic timer takes a duration and a callback function to execute at each time interval. So in that callback, we go through each particle, update its position, and then if a particle leaves the uh, vertical boundary, reset it to the original position. All this has to happen inside a set state function so that the widget will be repainted. It's also a good idea to dispose the timer when we are done. Nice, heavy rainfall.
Now I'm going to rotate the rainfall by 45 degrees. Uh, for that I need to save the canvas, do a translation to a position and then do a rotate and then we restore the uh, restore after the drawing. Um, we need to adjust the translation position to properly align rain with the clouds, but that looks good I think. We also can use clip rect uh, to clip the rain animation inside the rectangle, but that's pretty much optional. So the next thing is to add lightning. This video is already too long. I'm not going to show you it here, but it's a very simple trick. See if you can figure it out before looking at the code. As usual, the code is on GitHub and the link is in the description. Thanks for watching. And if you like what I create, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Until next time.